So she is a risk taker. We call her the Cobra. Her goal is to become a world champion without having to protect her record at any cost. Uh, she was the underdog when she faced Heather already uh, in the US last May, but she won that fight in a very, very <laughs> convincing way. That's true. And this victory opened doors for her upcoming championship fight against Kelly Reese in November, uh, on November 19 on The Zone. Uh, she is on the road to Undisputed. Today, I am with Jessica Kamara. Hello. Oh, thank you so much for, for having me and having no. the time to chat with me. No, thank you. I'm so happy uh, we are able to have this uh, quick chat. I know you're so busy right now. Uh, it's normal. <laughs> Preparation for your big day that is in less than one month now. Yeah, I, think. I know. It's pretty, time yeah. flies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How is your preparation going? It's going great. You know, everything is going as planned. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, stay positive, keep my mind busy. Just, yeah, just going through the usual, you know, it's just uh, just another training camp. I've done it so many times. and um, But you're always fight ready. <laughs> Jessica, oh, yeah. you're always fight ready. I'm yeah. always surprised to see how <laughs> fight ready you are all the time because you're a bit, like, you're a bit crazy in a way. You accept challenges like at the last minute all the time. You're like, I don't know. Yes, but these are these are opportunities, you know, opportunities that you can't turn down, right? So it's, you know, I feel I would feel, I feel like I would be letting myself down, not taking those opportunities. So, you know, I feel blessed to get those opportunities and I just jump on them whenever I get them. <laughs> that's what you like. So that's why yeah. I was, when I presented you, that's why I say you, you, you're you not, you don't seem to care that much about having the perfect record, zero uh, losses. Uh, you want, to, you're, you're not that kind of boxer, right? No, that, that's not what it's about. You know, I like to be challenged. I like to challenge myself. And I feel like that's when uh, I bring out the best in me. So, you know, those those fights like, you know, when I took that last minute fight with the Tori Bustos, even though that was canceled, you know, I was ready within two weeks to take that fight. And I was, you know, really positive and, and to, you know, that I was going to get that victory. And then I got this opportunity to fight for the, the road to Undisputed. And now I have my upcoming fight coming with um, Kaylee Reese. And that's a huge fight. She's, you know, a great competitor. And that's a great matchup for us, too. Yeah. And, you know, when we say everything happens for one reason, I think it suits you so, so well. <laughs> everything yes. happens for one reason, because, you know, yes. you had some cancellations before you uh -huh. had to cancel because to get other opportunities. I'm referring to uh, last year uh, at the beginning of the year when you decided not to fight Marie-Pierre Hull, even if it was planned, because you, you got this great opportunity to fight Heather already in the U.S., yes. And you were the underdog. I said it yeah. before, but you were totally the underdog. She was, uh, she's a fan's favorite. She had only yeah. one loss before you <laughs> and against Amanda Serrano. And which is a yes, just, exactly. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> against, so it, yeah, you're a risk taker. You, you, uh -huh. you, uh, and when we say nothing happens, uh, there's always a reason for something. Um, that's a little bit uh, your mindset, I guess. Exactly. You know, there's always, there's so many ups and downs that happen in this game and um, anything negative that happens, I just feel like it's just, it's just a milestone I have to go through to get to those, you know, bigger steps. So you know, even though that fight was canceled with Victoria Bustos, I knew bigger things were coming ahead. And then I had this opportunity, which is huge. This one is, yeah, that's probably the, the biggest mm -hmm. opportunity of your life so far uh, yes. uh, in a boxing sure. perspective, yeah, of course. Road to Undisputed. Sometimes I'm thinking, is she a little bit gambler? Is she, or maybe she just know her real value and she trusts her guts. Or maybe she's fearless. Are you all of these answers? Yes, everything. All of the above. <laughs> and more plus, plus, plus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I see you I'm impressed by uh, by, by uh, your journey so far this is a crazy journey because it was not always easy um you are uh, Ontario born uh, you yeah. relocated yourself in Montreal for what reason are you in Montreal is it uh, for bo a boxing perspective lifestyle why did you choose Montreal what more Montreal brings you more than any other place right now well, when I was in Ontario, I, I was training with um, Adrian Tadaruscu. 
um, he had passed away and I had planned to turn pro um, just shortly before that. And when he passed away, I was like, you know, what am I going to do? You know, I want to turn pro, but, and I, I just thought everything was just kind of leading me in the direction to move somewhere. So I said, you know what, Montreal is, is the fight city in Canada. You know, I feel like that's, that would lead me to bigger opportunities. Um, and that's when Mary Eve was kind of, you know, coming up. Yes. So I think, you know, she's, she's getting a lot of uh, publicity and, and women, women's boxing in Ontario, they don't really get too much publicity over there. So I said, you know what, I think, you know, I'm going to move to Montreal and I just moved there. I didn't really have an, a plan to, you know, where I was going to train. I just figured, you know, I'll check out different gyms, see where I, it best suits me. And I had uh, reached out to Shaquille Finn. Um, and he actually just told me like that him and his coach, which is Ian McKillop, um, my, my former coach right now, my, my coach right now, he, uh, they were just opening up a gym, Donnie for boxing gym. Like, yes. Basically like the week I had moved to Montreal, they opened up this gym. So I went, uh, I checked out the gym. I met with uh, Ian, we did some pads and we just clicked, we had this chemistry. So he basically just started training me right from the get-go. I had my pro debut in March of 2017 and we, yeah, we just kept the journey going from there. That's crazy so far. This journey is crazy mm -hmm. because like, as you said, you turned pro not long time ago and you're already reaching the top. You're, you're yes. at the top and you're like, you're, you may be undisputed soon. I hope for you, but like, even if, mm -hmm. if, even if you're not, you, you, you have, you have fought so many good girls and you still have so many good things uh, coming for you. Uh, you're yep. talking about your coach, the, the, how, how it clicked between you. How important is it to have that kind of relationship with the coach, uh, especially when you're, you're about to turn pro? It's, it's very important. You know, you have to be comfortable with your coach. You have to have confidence in your coach and your coach has to have confidence in you. So if, you know, even if it's like, you kind of get that and when you're doing pads and then when you're, you know, doing training sessions together, you're doing sparring together and he's cornering you for sparring, you know, it clicks because you can trust what he's saying and what he's saying is working. Right. Yeah. So when you go in the fight, it's like, I just, I just go in there, relax. I'm like, okay, I just have to listen to what my coach is telling me what to do. And yes. if I just listen to exactly what it tells me, it tells me to do, I'll come out there victorious. Right. So that's pretty much the confidence I have with Ian. You know, I feel like what he the advice that he gives gives to me in the ring when I come back to the corner I feel like you know it works it works for me so we have that good relationship I have confidence in him he has confidence in me and it just works out well and often people may think boxing is an individual sport but it's a team sport you mm -hmm. have to be surrounded by people that you trust nutritionists trainers uh, and so on and it, it's it, you have your cut men or cut women in the corner you are, so it's not it's not an individual sport at all you need to trust someone at a certain point you cannot just train yourself alone uh, uh, all the time you need uh, to have good sparring partners to have a strategy yeah. uh, this is uh, this is not like a, a running marathons as an example this is totally different yeah, definitely. You know, there are people, you know, behind me in this journey that have helped me in so many ways and I couldn't, I couldn't do it on my own. So definitely, you know, I'm grateful to have a good team behind me. There was this hype when you got the, the we, we knew this summer, we learned, <laughs> we, we learned this summer that you were about to face um, Noelia Victoria Bustos at the three week notice. <laughs> that was very yeah. short notice. We were like very excited and then it got canceled because she had passport issues. Um, mm -hmm. How did you feel at that moment? Did you already know that you would have this opportunity of Road to Undisputed? Was it already a, a, a plan or it came after? Um, well, that was kind of in the works. So when he had this opportunity, it was going to be like, cause they had already talked about this, this, um, this tournament happening. So basically I was going to fight for this vacant WBO title. Yes. And then when I won this title, I would participate in the tournament. Yes. And when it got canceled, I wasn't, I was, I was very disappointed, but also because I wouldn't have this opportunity to be in the tournament. So when I actually got the call to still participate in the tournament. I was, I was so grateful. 
Yes, I can understand it. And, it, mm-hmm. you know, you have been chosen with three other champions, Mary McGee, Chantel Cameron, Kelly Reese. They all, th- the three girls, they already have one belt, at least. You don't mm-hmm. have any. Um, no. How, how do you, how can you justify uh, your place there? How can you sell us that you're, you deserve to be there? I know you deserve to be there for people saying she's not champion. The three other ones are champion. Why is she there? What can you answer to them? Why are you there? Um, well, I'm definitely, you know, you look at all four girls and I'm the underdog. I'm the underdog, but look, I you like went this. Up against, you like this I position. Went, yes. But I love, I love being the underdog. Yes. I love proving people wrong. So I went up against Heather Hardy and my record was seven and two. And when she was what, 20, 21 and one, I, I don't know, I forget what her record was, but you know, she had a lot more experience. She was a champion. I was a huge underdog and I won like unjustifiably. Like, oh I won yeah, that, that fight, was clear. Right? That was, was a clear um, win. Yes. Yes. So I feel like that, that fight with Heather Hardy gave me this opportunity. I feel like that put me in a position to, to fight in this um in this tournament but even before heather hardy you fought melissa sainville uh, in mm-hmm. 2020 that was yeah. a close fight many were many many said it was a draw you know or yeah. almost a draw uh, mm-hmm. it was way closer than it appears and uh, melissa sainville is a big uh, was mm-hmm. is, is a big fighter she's renowned and so it you were also the underdog against her. So that's not yes. the first time. That's not the first time. Heather Hardy is something, but you had previous uh-huh. fights where you were the underdog. You don't care yeah. about this. And you I go and... like I, I keep getting I keep getting better and better with um with each fight. And even when I fought uh, St. Phil, I fought 10 rounds with a hematoma on my head. So you got to take yes. that into fact too, right? So and after that fight, I made a lot of adjustments in my training and I learned. That was right, my next so, question. Ooh, mm-hmm. What is the difference between the Jessica Camara who fought in 2020 before the pandemic and the Jessica Camara who fought Ed Hardy earlier this year? What did you adjust? Well, it's just, it just comes with experience. You know, there was, there's was mistakes I made and I just perfected those mistakes. You know, I had my hands down. I was, I wasn't cutting off the ring. So I worked on a lot of those things and I just put in the work in the gym and just improved, improved on everything. You know, I had the hunger and I have the heart to, you know, just keep moving forward. You know, if you knock me down, I'm not going to come back up. Yes, exactly. You're talking about cutting the ring. That's something you did very well against Mm -hmm. Heather Hardy. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. of course, there's improvement. And, you know, fighting the best bring you uh, bring you to something yes. the best version of yourself yes, yes yes exactly so yeah um if we um if we say uh, that you're okay the, the next fight the next fight let's talk about november 19 because that's what's coming okay you mm-hmm. fight against calories three belts mm-hmm. not one three so it's better it's better than what was planned uh, earlier yes. this summer so wba wbo and ibo i think right yeah okay yeah uh calories she's also a kind of fearless um fearless she uh, yeah yes. you know her quite well because i think uh-huh. you share the same agent or yeah so we have the same we have the same manager she's actually engaged <laughs> yes to um to our man- yeah so she oh yeah that's true. Her manager. yeah Th- that's true um she commentated on my last two fights um yeah we know each other quite well um but she's she's definitely a fearless fighter. You know, I feel like we have that in common and the fact that we're both fearless and we both can bang, it's just going to be an entertaining fight. You have something similar. You accept challenges that are heavy, that are big. Uh-huh. You know, she fought very good girls. She has fought uh-huh. uh, Cecilia Brekus, uh, Christina Hammer. I think Hannah Gabriel, you fought yeah. Melissa Saint-Ville, uh, you fought uh, Heather Hardy, same kind of, uh, I don't uh-huh. protect my record <laughs> mindset. You know? Yeah, we have the same mindset. Is it difficult to is it difficult to fight someone you appreciate? Is it more difficult? Um yes, yeah, it is. It is I know some know, fighters they don't they don't want to do this. Uh, some they say yes I, and some they say no. 
I prefer not to, right? But when yes. it comes to fight day and you get in the ring, that switch turns off, right? So, you know, it's all business when you go in there. And then when it's time to fight, it's time to fight. So, it, it yeah, yeah, I prefer not to fight somebody that I'm cool with. But, I mean, I am just so grateful and thankful to have this opportunity. So, I'm just blessed. I'm blessed to be and, getting and in there. And if you win and Mary Maggie wins... You, that's way, that's gonna be the same thing because you're also yes. like Mary Maggie. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So the three of us are in the same um, same management team. So the best scenario is you win and you fight Chantel Cameron. <laughs> uh -huh. Mary Maggie will say no, no. <laughs> what is she saying? <laughs> I'm rooting. I'm rooting for Mary Maggie in this fight. Yeah. 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 Mary Maggie. Of yeah. course. Of course. Solidarity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, like, so it's you it's more difficult to fight someone you appreciate you're talking about the switch that you you know when you're on the on the ring you are different you're not the same jessica you, how do you prepare how do you prepare for that to, to, i like when you know you you know you're gonna maybe hurt someone you appreciate uh, do you have um did you have to do you have someone preparing you or you do it by yourself or Well, that's hard to explain, you know, when you're in the ring that uh, unless you actually go in there and you do it yourself, it's hard to actually really know that switch, you know, it's just such a focus, you know, you, like your tunnel vision, you know, okay. you're, you're just focused on that target and that's the pony in front of you. And, you know, everything, these past 14 years I've been in the sport of boxing, True. all, all goes towards that one, that one moment in the ring, you know, like my whole journey. Everything I've gone through, everything I've gone through in my, my personal life outside of boxing, you know, I bring that all into the ring with me. It's like each time I fight, I'm a different person. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you don't have only one style because it's very old fashioned to say that we have one style and we, we are only like this and like that. It's very old fashioned. I think you can adapt and you can be uh -huh. different version of yourself, depending of the opponent, depending of where you are at in your life. Um, yes. That's mainly it. That's mainly it. Uh, so let's say, okay, let's say that, okay, I don't want to jinx you, but if you win, when's going to be, what's the next you step? When I win. Yeah. <laughs> if, when you win. Okay. When you win against uh, Kelly Reese, the next step is Mary McGee or Chantel Cameron. Yes. When? Do you know already? When? Um, I believe early next year. They don't have a date set yet, but yeah early next year early next year mm -hmm. so at maybe a, at the end of january beginning of february we will have an undisputed champ yes and it's going to be you it would be me <laughs> the under yeah, i'll be walking in i'd be the i walked into the tournament with no belts and the plan is to walk out with all six six belts that's big <laughs> can you so how can it, you be excited about having the opportunity of being the owner of six bells how do you stay grounded when you think about it this is big this is huge not a lot yes, of female is... fighters will have this opportunity in a lifetime in a career time to fight in a tournament to have a concrete opportunity of having six bells this is the biggest the biggest tournament well this is the first ever tournament for women's boxing never had you know anything like this for like a road to undisputed. Yeah. So this is the first of the first and to be able to, you know, participate in this and just envisioning, you know, going out there and, and, and getting those titles. That's, it's just, it's, this is all a dream come true, but I'm just enjoying the process, you know, just enjoying, yes. you know, just even in camp, the struggles I have to go through in camp even, you know, I just embrace each day and, you know, I grow through this experience and, um, Yeah, I'm just blessed. I'm just enjoying the process. The marketing as well was cool. You went to England uh, uh -huh. from when they announced, when Hedy Earn announced that tournament, all yeah. the four girls, mm -hmm. you were in England at the same time to attend mm -hmm. at the same time, this, this famous event where Katy Taylor was fighting. Um, yeah. uh, so you saw Katy uh, you saw Katy yeah. Taylor. And I think Benny Bridges was as well on, the, on that fight. Yeah, so Benny Bridges was on there too. Is Katy Taylor a target for you after? No matter what happens with the tournament, is it a possibility? Is it something you, someone you would like to face at a certain point in your career? 
I, she's my dream fight. You know, if I had to pick, you know, somebody like who'd be my dream fight, it'd be Katie Taylor. You know, and I think that's the plan for the undisputed champion at 140 would be to face Katie Taylor, and that would be amazing. You know, and I, I have. Um, yeah, and it's possible because Matchroom uh, has Katie Taylor under contract. Yeah. They organize this tournament, so there's a concrete possibility of having that fight mm -hmm. done, being done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's impressive. Mm -mm. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Katie Taylor. You know, she's done so much, and especially she's done a lot of for women's boxing, you know, she's put us all on the map, you know, just like with all the success she's had in her, in her career so far, you know, she's definitely putting a lot of eyes on women's boxing. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. She attracts a, a huge, huge amount of people. Yeah. She sells a lot of pay-per-view more than many American male fighters. Uh -huh. <laughs> she sells a lot. So she's, she's a great, um, she showcases the, the, the women's boxing in a very positive way. And so, uh, yeah, I can understand why you'd like to have your chance against her as well, because challenging the best is always, an, is, is, is always a dream. You know, when you challenge the best, yeah. you have an opportunity against the best. It's because you're yourself at the top in a certain way. You know, and that's how I you see never it. know what you're capable of until, you know, you, you, you go against the best and, you know, you never know what'll happen from there, right? Yes. The sky's the limit. If we go back to when you started boxing, why did you start boxing? At what age? What attracted you in that discipline? Because it's not so common. I, you know, I, we see we see more women in gyms now, but like ten years ago, uh, it was not the case. It was not the case no. at all. Not even in Montreal, where, as you said, boxing, women's boxing, was growing. So why yeah. and when did you start? Um, it's actually funny you say that because my, my parents were very old school European and they didn't even allow me to play sports in general. Okay. Right. They just say like, no, sports aren't for girls. Um, my two older brothers were wrestlers. My cousins always played soccer. So, you know, I always wanted to go and play soccer with them, but I was never allowed to. Um, I had a rough upbringing with, um, especially with my mother. Um, I was abused as a child and I feel like just going through those obstacles as a child and um, it toughened me up, you know, made me, yeah. that made me the, the fighter, you know, that I was you were a fighter, a fighter before you know. being a fighter yes. in a certain way. Um, I had a really close relationship with my godmother, who's my dad's uh, sister. She passed away of cancer when I was 17. And um, when I lost her, I just... Um, I couldn't really cope with, with that loss. And I was, I just got really angry. I was getting into fights at school. I got expelled from school. I got charged. I was just going through a lot of trouble and, um, just decided to pick myself back up and, and put myself on my feet and think positive and just fight for myself. So boxing really, um, inspired me especially when I watched, when I watched women's boxing on TV, I was always like, wow, you know, like it was just, it inspired me. I never thought that I would actually be a boxer, but I just love watching it. I loved, um, the movie million dollar baby really inspired yes. me. Yes. Yeah. So after that, um, I actually was introduced to a boxing gym in Kitchener, Ontario. And when I walked in there, it was just like, I just fell in love when I hit the, it was just like every, all the negative emotions, just came out and it just felt like this is home. <laughs> this is where I need to be. Yeah. I just felt it was just a very comfortable environment that I was in. It just felt like I belong there. And I just continued every day. I would go back and I always worked really hard, even though I wasn't a natural at all. <laughs> oh, but you can um, learn. You can yeah. learn. And it's yeah. Not but I worked learn. hard. Uh -huh. And yeah. So I started when I was 19. Um, Within less than a year, I had my first amateur fight. And yeah, basically that's where it started when I was 19. In a certain way, when you say boxing changed my life uh, mm -hmm. for good, I, I, I learned a lot from boxing and I'm still learning and, and all this. What would you say, what would you tell to parents who are against um, sending their daughter in a gym, in a boxing gym, if, even if they, they would like to try it? 
to convince the, them that boxing is not only punching faces and being violent. I feel like, you know, parents get the wrong perspective of boxing. You know, they think that, you know, you send their kids to the gym, you know, they're actually just going to hit people in the face and they're going to get hit in the face. When they step in the, in the gym for the first time, that's not what's going to happen. You know, they're not going to jump in the, in the ring and, and spar with somebody. But I, what I can definitely say is that, you know, boxing can do so much for, for the youth. Like I, I work with youth myself and, you know, I get, you know, people that are very shy, you know, youth that are very shy and it just brings out the confidence in them or you get youth that you know are dealing with anger and it you know it releases it so there's nothing negative that can come true from the sport of boxing you know so it definitely would encourage any parent that has any negative impressions on boxing to just give it a shot right and there's a work ethic as well in this, you uh-huh. know, you, you, you don't, yeah, ju- you don't, y- you're not entering in the gym and you start punching faces like this and with no, no, no theory, no practice, no strategy. And it's not the, the way it works. Yeah. He just discipline, you know, and yeah, that's exactly it. And the confidence that comes out in the kids, you know, once they start, you know, working on something and, and seeing the improvements and the adjustments that, you know, that they're making, it, it just changes them. You you met your wife uh, during a fight week, <laughs> mainly. That's that's mainly it. Yes. I like this story because it's a beautiful story. <laughs> um, but like, how, how do you uh, how do you approach someone you just you just you, you you just beat a couple of minutes ago? Do you go and say, "I'm sorry, hi, I won, but I like you. Would you like to share your number with me?" How does it work? I mean, uh, <laughs> this is so funny because for the people who doesn't know, for the one who don't know, so you met your you were your your wife was your opponent. Uh, yeah. So you won. And then you started to, uh, con- to to communicate with her in a certain way, and you became a, a couple after. But like, from from an opponent to a girlfriend, it's not so common. We can see from an opponent to friends. You know, sometimes we yes. boxing is very intimate relationship already with the opponent. So you you can hate the opponent or respect the opponent. Sometimes you become friends. But it's not so common that you fall in love with the opponent. Well, there's always respect there. Like I always have yeah. respect for my opponent. Um, there was there's actually a chemistry between us even before we fought. Um, and she she went to her corner and you know she she was saying things about me. I was going to my corner. I was saying things about her. Um, but we had a job to be done to get done. You know we fought yeah. the f- and. Um, I actually, I actually didn't speak to her after the fight. It was um, a, f- a couple months afterwards. Actually, I had contacted her on on Facebook, but she she spoke Spanish. Like she didn't speak any English. I didn't speak any Spanish at the time, so I was using Google Translate. <laughs> There was a language barrier, but it doesn't stop you. It didn't stop you. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I contacted her. I was just actually, I didn't know what to say. I was like, you know, I want to start a conversation with her, but I don't know what. To- say so I sent her like a, a waving emoji <laughs> and then she sent me another wave emoji and then we were just laughing and then we just kind of started the conversation from there and yeah we basically started like a going just going back and forth and eventually things turned into another we went on a vacation to uh, Cancun for my 30th birthday and that's when we actually got to know a little bit more about each other and we basically did the online relationship for like a year until she decided to come here and and in the meanwhile she learned english and you learned spanish um, or not <laughs> or before she learned english okay. she's been here for longer than two years um so she's picking it up yeah. but i learned spanish before i learned spanish within like six months Oh yeah, yeah. That was yeah. that was very helpful, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 
had to be done. <laughs> <laughs> One of the two needed to, 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 to try, at least with the language of the other. Uh, Erica is your wife. She's also a boxer, as I said. She was your uh -huh. opponent. She fought amazingly against Brioling, but you couldn't attend the fight because you were in the U.S. for, for your fight against, uh, yeah. against uh, Heather Hardy. Uh, I... Um, what are the challenges of being a, in couple with another boxer? That's a question I have because, you know, you talk about discipline, motivation, but it, there's also a strict routine in the life of, a, of an athlete, of, of at least like boxer. Are you more worried when she fights because you know what it is about? Or is the opposite, you're less worried for the same reason because you know how it, uh, what it is about? I feel like I'm less worried because I know what it's about for somebody who doesn't understand the sport and, you know, they see their significant other in there in a fight. It looks terrifying when you're not actually, when you don't understand the sport. Right. But because I understand it and I know I'm confident in her. So I, I'm not too worried about her, about, you know, her stepping in the ring. Yes. I'm actually, I, I'm confident in her, you know, I know what she's capable of. So, you know, I just hope that she performs at her best when she goes in there yes it. true and and like what is the routine two boxers in the same home okay how, <laughs> how does it happen i mean <laughs> because you may you're not fighting at the same time maybe you're not in training camp at the same time uh, maybe you, you one is cutting weight not the other is it complicated is it more complicated because you're two boxers um, I feel like there's more pros than there is cons, you know, I feel, because she understands the lifestyle. Sometimes my, my schedule can be so crazy and, you know, your mind is just so focused on the fight that it can be stressful. Sometimes it's just like, and sometimes I just need to breathe and she understands that stress, you know, it's just the pressure of the fight. And she, and she helps me a lot. You know, if I have a long day, she'll prepare me my food and she makes sure that I'm eating healthy. <laughs> um, really like that. You know, if I, if I'm, sore she you know you know she'll massage me she understands the just the challenges and the sacrifice and all the hard work that needs to be put into you know up 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 until fight day you know all through the training camp so in a certain way it's maybe easier because she knows exactly where you are at at the moment yeah. you are there uh-huh it's like you know if I'm going through something she understands okay yeah maybe I just have to give her her space now but there's obviously when when we're both in training camp at the same time you know and we're both going through that at the same sometimes it's it can be too much but we're always there to support one another so it's definitely yeah more pros than there is cons <laughs> aside of boxing what are your passions because i guess two boxers in the same house sometimes you, sometimes you need to do something else not talking all the time about boxing you need to have a certain normal normality we can say that yeah what, what do you do aside of boxing do you like nature do you like to cook do you have other passions i do like nature um i actually just got into the love of hiking <laughs> oh yeah yeah i like to just, just go out and go for a walk in the, in the woods and just get lost in nature and just be out there definitely like yeah like walking i like going running even if you know i don't i don't have a fight coming up i like i like running um i like spending time with family it's definitely yes. and traveling even of though course. i don't get to a lot of it but especially now with covid but, um, but yeah, it's hard because your, your life is so consumed with, with boxing and with work and all that, that you don't really have too much time to, you know, just uh, yeah. relax. But, you know, when we do have the time, we're, we usually spend the time together. We go out and we walk and we grab some coffee and enjoy life quietly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Let's play a game. Let's play a little game. Okay. I will ask you quick questions and I want you to answer the best you can. Okay. Uh, all right. There's no wrong answers, only good answers. Uh, oh, okay. First of all, who's your top three P for you in women's boxing? Clarissa Shields, Katie Taylor, and Amanda Saran. Okay. Well, we are mainly at the same and the same. If I say Terry Harper or Michaela Mayer. Michaela Mayer. 
If I say Katie Taylor or Jessica McCaskill? Katie Taylor. If I say Kim Clavel or Yesenia Gomez? Kim Clavel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I say <laughs> Chantal Cameron or Mary McGee? Mary McGee. Yes, you answered that. If I say training all day with your wife or a night out with your wife? Hmm. I would say a night out with my wife because I have too many training all day with that's, my wife. <laughs> that's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. If I say three minute rounds or two minute rounds? Three minute rounds. And okay. And if I say three minute rounds, no matter what, or three minute rounds only with a salary increase? Three minute rounds only with a salary increase. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. I like it. If I say dominating all rounds or winning by way of knockout hmm hmm that's a hard question i know yeah that's a hard question half and half I, yeah half and half half and half what's the difference like winning is winning um, but like winning by way of knockout i'm not a boxer but i, I cannot yeah. imagine what it is what is the feeling of having a knockout I... Well, I haven't actually experienced that, you know, but I've experienced, you know, dominating every round. Yeah. And I feel like that sometimes can be more entertaining than, you know, if you go in there and you knock the first no in the first round, the fight's over, right? Whereas, you know, you get a good fight that lasts 10 rounds and you get a good entertaining fight, right? So I feel like, you know, either or can be good. You know, everyone loves to see a knockout, but when you're, when you get 10 rounds, of you know good performance that's also entertaining and a knockout doesn't mean it doesn't mean you're a great fighter because yeah, no. you can have very fast knockouts uh -huh. but you're not able to box just to yes. box you know and finish mm -hmm. finish a fight uh, i feel dominating all around shows qualities that maybe winning by way of knockout doesn't show, doesn't mean because you win by knockout that you don't know how to box, but the opposite is also is also uh, the same. Uh, tell me, um, from a boxer, a boxing perspective, um, what female fighters do better than male fighters and what should we learn from them? That's a tricky question. What do female fighters do better than male fighters? Yes. Um, I feel like we have more heart and passion in there. You know, I feel like women just fight with all heart and passion. Whereas men fight with ego. Ah, uh, yes, I agree. No, yeah, that's, that's what I feel like. I agree. And that's why I like women's boxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what should we learn from males who are fighting? You can say nothing. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a hard question because, you know, I feel like you can always learn from, from any fighter, regardless if they're male or female, but I don't think there's any difference. Something, some, someone told me not long time ago in private, I asked, I asked this question and someone told me it's difficult because we cannot compare 100%. They, we have two minute rounds. We have 10 round championships. So it's difficult to say they do this better than us because we don't uh -huh. have the same conditions. We don't uh -huh. have the same salary neither. Often we don't have the same conditions for training because many women need to work and they cannot do it full time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and most women, most women, they cannot live from women's yes. boxing. They can live from boxing if, you know, by coaching, uh, owning a gym, you know, doing, uh, commenting on TV, things like that, maybe around the boxing, uh, boxing thing, but I cannot live from fighting. So, so that's what, that's the answer someone told me, gave me uh, to that question, that it's difficult to compare uh, yes. to right now. Yes. But I mean, you, you can't really learn that from a, from, you know, a male, like you can't learn that from male, mm -hmm. from the male fighters, because I mean, we still still have the same opportunities that the male fighters do. True. So, I mean, if we did, that'd be a different perspective, but. Exactly. We don't. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. If my last question would be like, 
if you have one wish for women for women for for female fighters what would it be for the future because like right now you have you know always women women's boxing in canada outside canada and so on what would be your wish for women's boxing let's say in three or five years or shortly i would say equal pay you know yeah. there's too much of a gap between male and female sure. at least being able to live from this uh-huh like you know a male if i were um, a male fighting for you know in a tournament like this i wouldn't have to work and do all of that like being sure. a male at my I wouldn't have to, you know, work two jobs and be able to, you know, and then still train. I wouldn't have to worry about that, but I have to because I'm a woman <laughs> and I'm not getting paid the same way. So exactly, and we see Clarissa mm -hmm. Shields and the um, Savannah Marshall. The, the, Clarissa Shields was saying, "I don't want to fight Savannah." until I get paid for it. Amanda Serrano is saying the same thing right now. I want to be paid correctly to fight the Katy Taylor because it will attract. It is interesting. We are good. We deserve a good a good salary for this. Yeah. So we I see like it. It's important. it's important for them to stand firm and you know I feel like they're fighting for all women, you know, to get yes to get the pay that they deserve. Yes, that's that's exactly it. And maybe some mm -hmm. people would tell you you cannot have equal pay because it's about pay-per-view and people they don't want they don't buy women's boxing as until they, that much they are not interested in women's boxing that's what some you know some people who are against the equal pay they say maybe they are right partly right but if at least you can you can you know have correct salary for what you're doing because it's a risky it's risky boxing is not it's not easy it's as risky yes for women that it is for men we saw what happened to um Janet Zakaria Zapatas you were there probably I was yeah, there as was. well so mm -hmm. you risk your life every time you uh, you you fight that's uh, and that's the same so it uh, being paid correctly yeah. at least you know, we're risking our lives for people's entertainment and, you know, us women are do, do the same as men, right? So I feel like, you know, we should get the same opportunities and I'd like to see change happen in the future. Yeah, I, I, I that, that's good. That's a, that's, mm -hmm. that's a, a nice wish for women's boxing and for all the little girls who are waiting and trying to learn uh, the, the game in the gyms, trying to fight for the first time as an amateur. So maybe, uh, maybe if it's not happening with your generation, it will happen with the next one. But like, that's a, that's a, a, a nice wish for women's boxing. Thank I you. hope so. Thank you so much, Jessica, for this uh, for this chat. Thank and you. It was a pleasure to have you. I will. I would love to be there in, on November 19th. I don't know if I will make it, but I will try to go to New Hampshire to see you fight. I will try very hard right now. <laughs> if, if you can't make it, you better be watching. <laughs> oh, for sure. I won't miss it. There's no reason no reason can you know nothing can, can can make me miss this okay for sure uh so maybe we'll talk uh, shortly when you're undisputed all right sounds <laughs> okay. great thank you so much for having me thank you very much